Hello everyone. We have been discussing the all encompassing resolution and we already discussed about the right understanding. Then we discussed about wisdom and now we are discussing about science. While talking about science, we said that it includes science of behavior, science of work and science of participation in the larger order. In the previous lecture, we talked about science of behavior in detail and now we are going to talk about science of work and participation in the larger order in detail. So in today's lecture, we are going to talk about science of work and science of participation in the larger order. So this is just a recap of what we have been doing. So we discussed earlier that the human desire is continuous happiness, which is the need of the self. And it is fulfilled by right understanding, right feeling and right thought. And then we went to elaborate upon resolution. We have already discussed about right understanding and wisdom. And now we are talking about science. So now we'll discuss about the science of work and participation, having discussed about the science of behavior in the previous lecture. So again, little bit of recap here. So what is science? So it is to ensure fulfillment of the human goal. And in the thought and expectation, the detailing that we do, is basically the science and there are three things to be studied here science of behavior science of work and science of participation in the larger order and the detailing of course includes the plans programs implementation strategies results evaluation and this is a kind of recursive process so we keep on planning we keep up we keep on making programs implementing and then we keep on evaluating and then changing our plans accordingly so we have to keep on working upon the science isn't it the essence, of course, is something that we get from contemplation of relationship, understanding of harmony and realization of coexistence. But when you go to make a plan, involved, then of course, the, of course, the desire, thought and expectation is involved and they are, we keep on working and reworking so that we are able to make better plans and programs. So science of work with the rest of nature. So talking about science of work, so of course the work has to take place with the rest of nature and that it has and it has to ensure mutual prosperity so when you go to talk about ensuring mutual prosperity that will include two things one is prosperity in the human being and the second thing is preservation of the rest of nature prosperity in the human being would mean that we need to identify the required physical facility with the required quantity and that is going to happen with the understanding of human being as coexistence of self and body, then we have to ensure production by way of labor. Also the production processes have to be cyclic and mutually enriching. And when we are working, we are working as a team. So we have to take care of the people with whom we are working. And that's how we have to ensure justice while getting involved in any production process. And then we have to ensure right utilization also because I'm able to ensure prosperity in me only when I'm able to rightly utilize the facilities that are available. And then only I can make out the right quantity required. And next would be exchange and storage. So it is an essential component of any society. So it's not that everybody is going to produce everything. So we produce certain things and then exchange with the other people. And the underlying feeling has to be mutual fulfillment and not some kind of coding or profit maximization. The second thing that we have to take care of is the preservation of nature. And it includes three things, enrichment of the nature, protection of the nature, and right utilization of the nature. So enrichment means adding to the quantity. Protection means maintaining that quantity so that it is fit to use. And right utilization means utilizing it for the purpose, which is acceptable to us naturally and not otherwise. So we'll detail upon each of these. But just try to make out whether this comes to you naturally. If we try to develop the science of work without ensuring mutual prosperity, then what would be the effect? The effect would be that we are not able to ensure prosperity in the human being and thus the feeling of deprivation will force the human being to exploit the nature further. And if we do not preserve the nature, then the nature is not going to fulfill our needs of the body in the time to come. And then again, we are going to face problems. And we can see that today we are facing so many issues, isn't it? To do with the environment, to do with the 
health and that is because we are not able to preserve the nature we are not able to preserve the air water soil so we have to work out the methods we have to work out the science so that we can preserve the nature the way it is acceptable to us naturally now if you look at the human target so there are four things here one needs to ensure right understanding and right feeling in every individual this is something that we discussed earlier while talking about the wisdom then prosperity in every family fearlessness that is trust in the society and coexistence in the nature and existence and the correct priority is starting from right understanding going to prosperity and then fearlessness and then finally coexistence and there are five dimensions here one dimension is education and scar the second dimension is health and sanity the third dimension is production and work the fourth dimension is justice and suraksha suraksha is the same as preservation and the fifth dimension is exchange and storage now if you look at the second dimension that is health and sanity and the third dimension production and work they relate to goals 2 and 4 because when we are able to ensure uh, health with a feeling of sanity then we are able to ensure prosperity in the family and also we are able to ensure directly or indirectly our coexistence with the nature preservation of the nature similarly in our production processes we have to see how we are able to preserve the nature at the same time we have to see how we are able to fulfill the needs of the body now what does production work mean so work is the labor a human being does on the rest of nature and production is the physical facility obtained out of work so the labor that we do on the rest of nature somebody is farming in the field somebody is making pots out of cake clay somebody is manufacturing computers somebody is manufacturing mobile so all these interactions with the rest of nature they are called as work and of course the human labor is involved there and we are obtaining some certain things and we are obtaining certain things out of that out of this labor and that is called as production so if we do production then we naturally get the physical facility but to do production we have to do work now when you talk about work there are two questions to respond to one is what to produce and the second question is how to produce so what to produce and what not to produce as you said no what to do and what not to do so what to produce and what not to produce so when we have the clarity about the needs of the human being then we'll be... so when we have to decide what to produce then we have to make out what is the requirement of physical facility and you can see that the physical facility is required for three purposes one is nurturing the body the second is protecting the body and third is rapidly utilizing the body and a little bit of exploration will show that there is no fourth purpose either we require the physical facility for nurturing the body isn't it or protecting the body or rightly utilizing the body so we have to make out precisely what the physical facilities are which are required for the body and then we have to look into the production processes so the production process have to be such which are mutually enriching and cyclic so that they are eco friendly and they have to be ensuring justice also so that they are people friendly so when we talk about ensuring justice it is something to do with being people friendly and we talk about enriching the nature then it has to be eco friendly so two requirements are there now try to make out have we been able able to clearly make out the response to these two questions in our studies today in our curriculum and academics today what to produce and what not to produce how to produce and how not to produce if we are not clear about these two issues then whatever technologies we develop it may do more harm to the nature and society than doing good isn't it now when we go to talk about mutually enriching cyclic processes and in hindi it can be termed as avartan shil process so, so it has to be cyclic and it has to be mutually enriching and that essentially means that every unit involved in the process needs to be enriched so let's say if you are cultivating so soil air water is involved when plants are involved so the process of cultivation process of farming has to be such that both of these get enriched so you will see that in the nature already there is a cycle the soil air water which are there in the physical order are fulfilling to the plants which are there in the bio order 
So this mutual fulfillment is already there in the nature and we have to understand it. This mutually enriching cyclic process is already going on in the nature. We do not have to make it. We do not have to create it. We just have to understand it and live accordingly to update the man-made processes accordingly. So you'll see that already there is a cycle in the nature. And if I have to have some sustainable method of production, then, then I have to understand this cycle. Isn't it? And this is not to be created. This is already there in the nature. We only have to understand it rightly and we have to live accordingly. And then whenever we have the man-made process required, then we have to update them in such a way that the cycle is fulfilled so that the process is mutually enriching. Now, if you look at all the four orders of nature about which we studied extensively, so you'll see that the soil, air, water are enriching the plants, the plants are enriching the soil, air, water, the plants are enriching the animals and birds, animals and birds are also enriching the plants. And they are fulfilling our needs also, isn't it? But, but when it comes to observe our role with the three, we can see that there's a question mark here. So we have polluted the soil, air, water, we have uh, deforested the land and there is a shortage of plants and that's how the carbon emissions in the air are not getting properly absorbed. And then we have made so many animals and birds extinct, we have been killing animals either for food or enjoyment. And that's how we are depleting the nature. So our role in the nature is certainly questionable and we have to look into this seriously because unless we are able to be fulfilling to the rest of nature, we are going to suffer. But with a little bit of exploration, we can see that if you are able to ensure right understanding and right feeling, if you are able to recognize our relationship with the rest of nature correctly, then we can enrich the nature, we can enrich the soil, air, water, we can enrich the plants, we can enrich the animals and birds. If you look at the animals in the forest, right from a mouse to an elephant, none of them is doing production, isn't it? But still they are, but still they are getting nurtured properly. None of them being able to produce are able to feed themselves properly, but human being, which is having the capability to produce, to do production, is not able to fulfill one's needs. And that's how people are dying of hunger. So we we'll have to see how to ensure the fulfillment of needs in such a way that our needs are properly fulfilled. And we are also able to enrich the rest of nature so that we can have the tick mark here, isn't it? So give a thought to this. Give a thought to this, whether you have understood it rightly, whether you are living accordingly. If not, then we have to update our processes. So we have to look into all the technologies that we are evolving today, whether they are nurturing the nature, whether they are fulfilling to the rest of nature, or they are depleting the nature, exploiting the nature. So the issues to be dealt with when we are talking about the science of work. So the work has to take place with the rest of nature and it has to ensure mutual prosperity. And that essentially means these two things, which I mentioned earlier, prosperity in the human being and preservation of the rest of nature. And it, the prosperity includes these five points that I mentioned earlier and preservation includes these three points. Therefore, science of work has to deal with all these issues. Even if you limit the science to physical world and not take care of the world of consciousness, still we have to ensure that these two ends are met. In the light of this, we can evaluate the present day state of science of work also. So if we have this clarity of science, then we can evaluate the practices, the programs, the strategies that we are drawing today in terms of science, and then see whether they are able to fulfill these two ends properly or not, whether they are able to fulfill these two goals properly or not, isn't it? A little bit of exploration will show that with all our efforts in science till today, we are not able to ensure prosperity in every family of the society, nor we are able to preserve all these units in the nature. So we have to take a serious look at this, isn't it? So have we identified the issues of concern for the science of work or not? So let us evaluate whether these issues of concern are taken care of by the science of today or not. So we'll go over all these issues one by one.
Now, if you talk about the prosperity in the human being, okay, so whether we have been able to identify the required physical facility with the required quantity, so this is something to be questioned. So you'll see that this is not taken care of because in the whole process of education, there is no content dealing with identification of the need for physical facility. You just try to make out, have you gone through any course since your primary education where you are able to make out the need for physical facility rightly, isn't it? Generally, we are told that wants are unlimited, resources are limited, and hence a natural conclusion is that everybody is bound to be deprived, though we do not say it very clearly in the class. But we have not been able to explicitly make out or even offer so that we are able to clearly make out what and how much physical facilities are required. It is implicitly assumed that this need is infinite, unlimited, and what is promoted is more and more consumption. And you can see that consumerism is on the rise in the society. And because of this rising consumerism, we are forced to work more and more for money because through money only we are able to purchase the commodities. And if you are not able to make out the need for these commodities, these facilities rightly, then you have to work more and more for money. And in that process, we lose our relationships. We also exploit the rest of nature. And this has somewhat become a societal phenomenon, isn't it? Now, when it comes to evaluating the production by way of labor, so you'll see that the mentality of production by putting labor is gradually going down. It is not promoted also in education or in the society. And everybody who is going through education is looking for a white collar job so that one does not have to make one's hands dirty. A job which does not call for labor, only management is there. And you see that when this kind of mindset is there, then gradually we tend towards exploiting those who are making their hands dirty, those who are doing labor. And that's how the rift between the rich and poor is also on the rise and the exploitation of human beings is also on the rise. When it comes to evaluating the cyclic and mutually enriching process, so while ensuring the justice with the people involved in the process, so you can see that most of our production processes today are not cyclic. They have become acyclic and they are not mutually enriching also. So you'll note that uh, to grow more and more food grains, we have been using the insecticides, pesticides, and chemicals, which are depleting the topsoil of the microorganisms, which are nurturing to the plants. And they're also harming our body. So can we have such production processes, which are cyclic and mutual energy? Presently, we'll see that our primary production, secondary production, tertiary production, all these production methods have somewhat become completely unsustainable. They are not mutually enriching. They are depleting the nature and they're not cyclic also. And that's how the problems in the nature are on the rise. So you can see that these problems of pollution, resource depletion are on the rise. Some years later, we'll not have the petroleum to utilize, we'll not have coal to utilize because we have been exploiting these resources too much. And if this happens, then this will certainly have an effect on the ecology, on the environment of earth. So try to explore on this issue and try to see whether we are able to do the right thing to ensure prosperity in the human being, whether we have been able to identify our requirement of physical facility, whether we have the mindset of production by labor, whether we are using cyclic and mutually enriching processes. And this will help you uh, find out different ways of ensuring all this because in the current education system, we are not able to more or less develop this kind of mindset. And not only this, we'll see that the issue of ensuring justice with our co-workers is also something to be questioned because most of our systems of management are focused on maximization of profit. And they are willing to work with the principles of opposition in place of relationship. So what holds mostly, uh, what is generally adapted as a practice is to exploit the people, let the opposition grow, uh, rather than fulfilling the relationship so that there is mutual happiness in the organization. And that's why we can see that there is some kind of struggle always going on in the production systems, in the among the people who are working together. And there are labor strikes, and there are strife to 
overcome such issues many many times the production units get shut down also because of the internal feuds and strife so we have to see whether we are able to ensure justice with our co-workers or not whether our production systems have been designed in that manner or not similarly talking about right utilization this is also a major issue because our education currently not focused on developing this kind of mindset whether people have the where people are thinking in terms of ensuring right utilization you see that there is no content dealing with right utilization of the physical facility rather consumption to the extent of indulgence is implicitly promoted and the same is seen at the liberal society where consumption is defined as status and is praised for so if you look at the advertisements you'll see that there are so many advertisements saying that whatever you are using is not good for use now and you can sell them off and purchase new ones you can sell off your old car you can sell off your house you can sell off your property you can sell off your sofa and go and get a new, new one they might still be fit for use but many times you are promoted to sell them off or remove them and then get a new one it is also being said that in many countries a large share of physical facilities that we have accumulated is dumped in six months and people go for newer ones just try to make out for yourself how many times you throw your clothes when they are torn and how many times you throw your clothes when they are out of fashion so if you are throwing your clothes because simply they are out of fashion it means you have not rightly utilized them isn't it similarly talking about exchange and storage so today you'll see that the exchange and storage is not basically meant for mutual fulfillment but most of the time the motivation here is profit maximization or even exploitation so like there could be three modes of exchange one could be give and give the other could be give and take and the third could be take and take so when we have a mindset of take and take so we try to take the maximum from the other and the other also tries to take maximum from us and then they just struggle isn't it in that exchange so it is not acceptable naturally when you go for take and give so you try to take the maximum from the other and the other is willing to give but you will see that this is not sustainable because the other can't just because the other just can't keep on giving you and you are always trying to take as much as possible from the other but when we have the mindset of give and give then this is certainly something which is sustainable so we have to see how we can make our exchange systems mutually fulfilling you see that if our exchange systems are mutually fulfilling then that exchange system remains sustainable otherwise because of exploitation after some time again there is some struggle and the exchange system starts getting questioned uh, similarly in the case of storage we'll see that in place of storing what is meant for right utilization people start hoarding okay in the name of storage and many times they also hoard so that they are able to create shortage and they are able to earn more and more profit there are, even if there is enough food grain for the society people will hoard it and create some kind of shortage in the market so that people start purchasing them at higher prices so that the people who are hoarding them are able to make more profits and this kind of tendency is there so we have to see whether we have been able to develop such signs of work and participation which could be mutually fulfilling isn't it now talking about the preservation of nature one aspect is enrichment enrichment means to add to the quantity so we have to see whether enrichment is at our focus or something else so in the present day production process if you see we are willing to explore the natural resources used in the process even the natural environment for example when you have to grow food grains or vegetables or fruits many times we go for inorganic farming and we are willing to produce such things at the cost of fertility and quality of the soil so are we really adding to the quality of soil or we are depleting the quality of soil talking about protection protection seems to be of concern only to the extent that it is very necessary for the immediate production for example putting fertilizer in the soil to get the immediate production and many times it is even at the cost of other qualities of the soil so there is a typical example of bhatinda district in punjab where many people are suffering from cancer and the reason being that 
people have put in so much of insecticide pesticide chemical fertilizers in their crop production that people who consume them start suffering from such deadly diseases in fact there is a train that goes from punjab to rajasthan and that train is named as cancer train because most because mostly the people traveling that train are cancer patients so we have to see whether we have been able to protect our water bodies whether we have been able to protect the quality of soil the quality of air the forests whether we are able to protect the forest many times we deforest the soil the land so that we can make them cultivable and then we use chemicals there to cultivate and on one hand we have cut down the trees to the extent that the carbon dioxide carbon monoxide noxes they are not absorbed by the environment to the extent it is required on the other hand we are adding such chemicals in the environment which can be further uh, injurious to the health of the people and again talking about right utilization so as we discussed in the case of physical facility similarly we have to see whether we are able to rightly utilize the resources in nature isn't it so if we have the tendency for over consumption so certainly that is not going to be done so we have consumed so much of mineral resources right so much of plants so we'll see that we have not been able to rightly utilize the air water soil because of which they have got polluted the water bodies are drying up the water table is going down in many parts of the country there are some parts of the country where drinking water is no longer available there are certain countries where the drinking water has completely got depleted and people do not have drinking water for use in there and even we we'll see that there are so many countries where the drinking water is not available because the water bodies have been exploited to that extent so these are really some issues of concern and we have to take care of that so try to see try to see in your own surrounding whether this is being done or not and what would be the solution towards it how can we enrich the natural resources how can we protect the natural resources how can we right to utilize the natural resources give a thought to this so we'll see that there are two problems which are prevalent one is resource depletion and the other is pollution so resource depletion means that the resources are used at a rate which is faster than the rate at which they can be produced again in the nature and that's how they are getting depleted for example the petroleum we have been using petroleum at such a fast pace that after some time the petroleum is not going to be available similarly coal similarly so many resources we are using and because of that the resources are getting depleted then there is another problem of pollution and that means that the product is such that either it does not return to the cycle in nature or it is produced at a rate that is faster than the rate at which it can return to the cycle in nature so for example if we enter into a cyclic processes then of course they are not going to return to the nature and if you keep on producing certain things which are not consumed at that same rate in the nature then of course that will create pollution so we have air pollution water pollution soil pollution plastic pollution isn't it because they are not consumed at the same rate at which we are producing so it can be seen that both these problems are due to involvement of processes which is either not cyclic or not mutually enriching and these problems can be solved if we start using the processes which are cyclic and mutually enriching so we need to evolve such processes which are cyclic and mutually enriching in fact people have started talking about sustainability they are talking about circular economy they are talking about renewable energy renewable materials so at some point we have to be really serious about it and we have to remove the non renewable resources we have to we have to get ourselves free from the consumption of such resources so again try to see whether we are facing this problem today or not try to make out in your own area what was the level of pollution 20 years back and what is the level of pollution now and the pace at which the pollution is going up what is going to happen in the next 20 years so we try to look at the depletion of resources in your own area the mineral resources the petroleum resources isn't it are they getting depleted or not petroleum is not available in the area well and good try to look into other resources which are available and find out whether they are getting depleted or not so these problems can be solved if we start using the process which is cyclic and mutually enriching and this is something that we have to really think about next comes science of participation so 
so when you go to study the participation in the larger order so you can see that there are five dimensions of human order in the society which help us fulfill the human goal and then we have to see how we can participate in those five dimensions so that we are able to ensure an undivided society and universal human order so to ensure development of talent in all necessary dimensions in same or different persons like engineering farming medicine plumbing and so on so that every individual is able to participate in a mutually fulfilling manner in each of the five dimensions of human order whether our participation in each of these professions is mutually fulfilling or not we have to make out many times we try to opt for such professions where we do not have to do physical labor where we can just dictate terms on others we can avoid working with our hands we can avoid working with our hands and these all faulty practices ultimately create disorder in the society so we have to look into such practices so that we are able to participate in undivided society and universal human order by participating of by participating into any of these dimensions so we have talked about the human goal and these are the five dimensions to fulfill the human goal and we can see how they are mapped with each other so education sanskar fulfills the need for right understanding and right feeling health sanyam as well as production work fulfill the need for prosperity in the family and coexistence in the nature and existence justice and suraksha so justice is related to fearlessness and suraksha that is preservation is related to coexistence and when it comes to exchange and storage so by ensuring proper exchange and storage we are able to ensure prosperity in every family and we are able to ensure fearlessness that is trust in the society also and try to see whether these five dimensions are able to fulfill the four goals or not when we are able to have these four goals being fulfilled in the society and the five dimensions being properly developed in the society then we can have the society organized in 10 steps from family to the world family so let's so say let's in a family there are 10 people in three generations then the family cluster will have 10 square people the village would have 10 cube people and going like this at the level of world family in 10 steps you can accommodate 10 to the power 10 people so this kind of possibility is there we can have a clear cut we can have a clear understanding of the universal human order we can have a clear understanding of how this whole world can become a family but for that again we have to start from here we have to start working from right understanding right feeling and for that we have to start from education if the education is strengthened then people who graduate from institutes they will have the mindset of right utilization they will have the mindset of uh, relationship and they will have the mindset of being complementary to the other for development of each other and then the whole world can become a family in this manner now when you look at the human participation in the orders of nature so some details can be shared here so to understand the inherent harmony in nature and to live accordingly we can facilitate a conducive environment for the activity or at least not violate it of all the orders this is something that we had discussed earlier to facilitate the innateness or at least not violate it of all the orders and to facilitate the inheritance or at least not violate it of all the orders so with each of these orders we can make a definite program so with the physical order our participation would be to facilitate the existence of the units in the physical order by ensuring conducive environment and maintaining and or ensuring the constitution for example the constitution of earth we have to maintain we have to ensure that the constitution of earth is sustained similarly when it comes to pranic order or bio order so we can have a look at our participation with different orders and this is something that we had discussed earlier with the physical order with the bio order with the animal order and with the human order so in the physical order we need to facilitate the existence by ensuring conducive environment and maintaining or ensuring the proper constitution for example the constitution of earth so the earth has its own constitution and if it do not sustain that constitution ultimately our survival is going to be at risk similarly in the bio order we have to ensure proper growth by ensuring conducive environment and maintaining or ensuring the seed for example seed of rice we had taken examples also here while discussing about this thing that there is some area in our country india where there we had not less than 12000 varieties of rice a few hundred years back but now very few varieties of rice are to be found and we'll see that these different varieties of rice had their own benefit according to the change of season in ensuring health 
and if you're not able to ensure this then ultimately we have to depend on medicines for our health similarly with the animal order we can facilitate the care of the body by ensuring the physical facility environment and uh, such things which are needed for the existence and growth of the body and when it comes to the self then we have to ensure its will to live we have to maintain and ensure its breed for example breed of cow so ensuring the will to live would mean that we are not killing the animals and maintaining or ensuring the breed would mean that yeah. we are able to maintain the breeds of animals for example lion tiger cow okay uh, it is said that there were several varieties of cow earlier to be found but in the slaughterhouses the cows have been slaughtered to such an extent that some of the breeds are not to be found today so these all faulty practices need to be evaluated similarly with the human order we have to facilitate care of the body by ensuring physical facility environment and uh, such things which are needed for the existence and growth of the body and it's not only the will to live that has to be ensured the will to live with continuous happiness has to be ensured and for that we have to work on education and sanskar so this is our participation with the human order so through education we are able to develop the self we are able to help the self get awakened to the activities of contemplation understanding and realization so that there is a definite participation so this is possible by participating in developing or maintaining undivided society and universal human order so for the human being we have to work in this manner and as we have been exploring that humans are different from animals our will is not only to live our will is to live with continuous happiness and for that we need right understanding and right feeling and for that we need the right education isn't it and then only we are able to develop our competence in such a way that we are able to ensure an undivided society and universal human order so i hope you are able to recollect this we had discussed about this in previous chapters so try to relate that content of discussion to the content that we are sharing here we also had discussed about the six values perseverance bravery generosity kindness beneficence and compassion so briefly i'll recap this so these are feelings which help us participate in the universal order so perseverance means that we have the commitment for living in harmony at all four levels with patience bravery means that we have the commitment for helping the other to understand harmony and to live in harmony at all the four levels generosity means that we have the commitment to invest one's self body and physical facility for understanding and living in harmony at all these four levels so these are three values at the level of human being there are another three values kindness and that means providing means to one who has the ability but not the means beneficence means helping the other to develop the competence to utilize the means that they already have and compassion means helping the other unconditionally to develop the competence as well as the means to fulfill his needs when he neither has the ability nor the means so we had seen that education is an act of compassion because the student may not have the interest to understand the student may not also have the content to understand and we try to make both the available so it is an act of compassion so we had discussed about these six values i will not elaborate or illustrate upon them but this is the way we participate in the universal order as a human being now we can have a brief discussion over the participation of human being in different dimensions of human order and here we'll make a brief presentation of it just to draw your attention towards them so that you can start exploring and when you have the next course which we for then we'll be discussing all these dimensions in much more detail so these are various dimensions that we can study so the five dimensions that you studied earlier now they can be mapped onto these eight dimensions so education health justice production and service exchange and distribution right utilization preservation and various services which are administrative and social so these are eight dimensions so this is another kind of formulation that we can take for participation in the harmony in the society now talking about the dimensions of education and health we'll see that education plays an important role in ensuring human order it builds the ability the competence for right understanding right thought and right behavior in every person it enables one to behave properly with other human beings and work with mutual fulfillment with the rest of nature and thereby contribute to human order or system 
so this is something which is common to what we have discussed earlier so every human being have the innate potential to understand the desire to understand and education is a process which develops the right understanding right feeling right thought and also imbibes such skills which one can employ for producing the physical facilities which are required for fulfilling the needs of the body and all this is ultimately going to be enabled by education and hence it is a very important dimension of society if you look at the dimension of health then the achievement of this dimension can be seen in terms of health of the human body when this dimension is functioning well it will lead a life which is conducive to good health human being is coexistence of self and body this is something that we have explored earlier the satisfaction in the self is ensured by the dimension of education whereas health of the body is taken care of by the dimension of health when these two dimensions of education and health are ensured every individual is able to live as a human being and live with fulfillment with mutual fulfillment so dimension of health is also very important if i have to ensure the health of the body then i have to develop the feeling of self regulation in me and this understanding of self regulation is something that has to come from education but with this feeling of self regulation what programs i have to make that is something to be taken care of by the dimension of health and in any society if education and health are taken care of properly okay then you'll see that uh, the society naturally leads to a state of harmony of course this has to be complemented by other dimensions but right understanding in the self is going to be ensured by that dimension of education and this is something that we have discussed that the satisfaction in the self is ensured by dimension of education whereas the health of the body is taken care of by the dimension of health and so talking about dimension of justice uh, we have seen earlier that justice essentially means that we are able to rightly recognize the feelings in the relationship which are mutually fulfilling which are naturally acceptable and when we are able to recognize such feelings then we are able to fulfill them we are able to also evaluate them rightly so that it leads to mutual happiness and the mark of justice is mutual happiness now we have systems of justice even today but mostly the systems of justice today are working to settle the feuds and the fights and the quarrels in place of that if you can have a system of justice in the society which is proactively working to develop the right feeling in the people then only there could be fearlessness and trust in the society so when a human being with a healthy self and healthy body is able to ensure fulfillment in relationships with other human beings justice is naturally ensured so this is ensuring recognition of relationship among the human beings its fulfillment through values leading to mutual happiness and practice of comprehensively abiding by this is known as system of justice so we have to devise such practices such ways and means by which we are able to imbibe such understanding such feeling in the people so that they are able to live together with happiness mutually people go to the courts of law only when there is a feud or there is dissatisfaction in the relationship there is unhappiness in the relationship so you'll see that a person goes to the court much later justice but the seeds of injustice are sown much earlier so if you are able to remove those seeds of injustice by ensuring the right feeling in the people the natural people will not have to go any court of law for justice so there would be another kind of role for justice system here and that would be a proactive role of ensuring harmony in every family of ensuring harmony among the families so we'll have to design such practices evolve such uh, means and there would be the role of science how to ensure mutual happiness in the family among families in such a way that people are able to live together Uh, people are able to coexist together so we have to see we have to develop the science of evolving such practices in the society and when justice is ensured trust and fearlessness is established within interpersonal relationship and in the systems so there is lot more to think about this how to ensure justice proactively how to ensure such a relationship in the society that people do not have to go to any court of law or to a police station with any grudges or complaints so think about this maybe you can take the case of a mohalla or a village and try to see how we can have such practices prevalent in the society so that people are naturally able to ensure justice so one common way that has been adopted traditionally is to have a common meeting together 
So traditionally also we will see that we have developed such a practice of sitting together and discussing all these issues. So in the family, it is expected that the family members sit together at least for once in a week and discuss all their issues, discuss their concerns and their aspirations and try to reach a common conclusion. Isn't it? Similarly, we can have such meetings in the villages. We can have such meetings even at higher levels of order in the society so that people are able to dialogue with each other. They are able to share their concerns. If that takes place, then the injustice naturally comes down in the society. Talking about the dimension of production and service. So the production ensures physical facility required for production of our physical needs. What we obtain as outcome of labor on the rest of nature is known as production. So you'll see that in addition, we notice that there are certain activities which do not produce anything but are concerned with protection or maintenance. For example, washing of clothes is one such activity where there is no production but preservation or maintenance of existing items is there. So when it comes to the dimension of production and service, so we have to look at it in a holistic sense, producing what is required, preserving, protecting uh, what is not to be produced but just to be protected, and then rightly utilizing every physical facility. There would also be people who would be working for repair and maintenance. And this is another kind of activity that will take place in the society. It is not directly associated with manufacture of any item, but with the protection or maintenance of existing ones. Because along with manufacturing of new items, there is also a need for protection or maintenance of items already produced. And activities of such kind are also known as service. So even today, you can see that there are so many uh, people who are working in the service sector, people who cut your hair, people who stitch their clothes, people who take care of the health of the body. So you'll see that in society today, already there are so many people working in the service sector. You know, somebody is cutting hair, somebody is stitching clothes, somebody is taking care, uh, care of the cleanliness in the society. So their production is not taking place, but the maintenance is being done, the protection is being done. So this is another dimension which will be there in the society. Then the dimension of exchange will of course be there as we discussed earlier. So we do not produce every item that we use nor we can perform every kind of service that we require. And hence we can produce only some of them and then all other items are produced by others. And through exchange, all such items and services are made available to us as per our needs. So somebody is producing food grains, somebody is cutting hair, somebody is doing carpentry, somebody is rearing animals. And then people exchange the facilities among themselves so that they are able to fulfill their needs. But the bottom line is that the exchange system has to be mutually fulfilling. It does not have to be exploitative, isn't it? Similarly, the dimension of right utilization is there. So we need to elaborate on how to utilize rightly the things that we have obtained by virtue of production or exchange and what is meant by right utilization also needs to be understood. A program needs to be made to ensure right utilization in the society. So as we discussed earlier, there are so many resources available in the society in abundance and if you do not utilize them rightly, they will become scarce after some time. So there has to be some dimension of society where people will take care of the natural resources. So the river is flowing, how to ensure that the river continues to flow. There is a certain level of pollution in the air, how to contain that pollution of air, how to utilize the air rightly, how to utilize the forest rightly, how to utilize the food production rightly. So presently we can see that this kind of system is not so prevalent in the society today, but we have to take into account such practice also. And then the preservation that is security. So we need to preserve that is enrich and protect the natural resources which we utilize for production and exchange. And we look at this as preservation security. So presently we'll see that in the name of security, we make arrangements so that if there's some opposition with another part of the society, then we make arrangements for defense, we make arrangements for weapons, but this is not the actual uh, practice that would be required in the harmonious society. So essentially we have to ensure justice with human being and preservation with the rest of nature. So when you say security, ultimately it has to be ensured with the rest of nature. So there may be flood somewhere, there may be drought somewhere, okay? Somewhere there would be a storm which would have uh, devastated the 
houses in the colony. So there would be some dimension of the society which will take care of all this. And finally, the dimension of service. So that would be administrative service as well as social service. Now, by administrative service, we mean that in order that the system runs smoothly, it is essential to ensure the dimension of human order and to make sure that they are working properly. And this necessary function of ensuring that the systems are working properly is called as administrative service. So presently also we have the administrative system and of course it is functioning and we'll have to see what further improvisation has to be done so that the so that this dimension of the society is able to cater to the real needs of the society again in terms of social service we'll see that despite the efforts to ensure the different social dimensions certain shortcomings may remain and taking care of them through relationships is called as social service so it may be the case that in spite of all the dimensions functioning properly there may be certain loopholes certain uh, inadequacies in the functioning of this system there could be certain shortcomings and then we need to evolve such dimension also in the society which can take care of such shortcomings the service would be of two kinds one which is ensured by the system that is administrative service and the second which is being provided to each other by the society with a feeling of relationship and that is the social service so presently also we have these two services functioning and we have to develop some more humane models of having these services in place so briefly going over all this so we'll see that for the fulfillment of our goals and objectives we need the dimensions of education health justice production and service exchange right utilization security and services the services would include both administrative and social so education and health take care of our physical and mental well being as we discussed earlier so with education we are able to ensure the right understanding and right feeling with with the system of health we are able to ensure that the parts of the body are working properly and the body is able to work as an instrument of the self justice takes care of the relationship in human interaction in such a way that mutual happiness is ensured in every relationship so in place of people going to some court of law or police station because of some injustice we have to develop such proactive models of justice so that there is no such case arising in the society similarly production and service exchange right utilization and preservation such measures if you see they ensure that our requirements of physical facility are taken care of properly ensuring mutual fulfillment the rest of nature and we are able to complement the rest of nature also so we do need physical facilities but we have to fulfill the need for physical facility in such a way that the rest of nature is enriched protected and rightly utilized and this will be taken care of these systems now to enable these dimensions to function without failure the dimension of service at the level of system is required so this will be basically coordinating all these dimensions and there would be an administrative service which is going to coordinate this system and there would be a social service sector also which will take care of the shortcomings uh, which uh, may be possible in other dimension of the society so these are various dimension of the society and and this would help us obtain the human objectives and this would help us fulfill the human goals now we have seen that science in its broader term is defined as how to ensure fulfillment of the human goal its thought its expectation detailing out of the plan program implementation result and evaluation and we saw that while discussing science we have to talk about science of behavior science of work and science of participation how if you look at the present day science it is not paying much attention to the science of behavior and science of participation in larger order once again now if you evaluate the present state of science so we have seen that science in its broader term is defined as how to ensure the fulfillment of the human goal uh, so what would be the thought processes evaluation involved there what would be the expectation there and then we can detail out the plan program implementation result and evaluation there and as you said earlier that science should include science of behavior science of work and science of participation in the larger order now if you evaluate the present day science you will see that it is not paying much attention to the part of behavior and to science of behavior and science of participation in the larger order even if there is some effort it is mostly scattered 
and even whole dealing with science of work its approach is quite limited as we discussed in this session only so we need to broaden the scope of science isn't it so the present day science mostly you will see is focused on how to add to the production how to add to consumption how to maximize the profit and things like this so we have to make it humane so that would be possible only when we are able to include consciousness and space as realities of concern so we have to study about the consciousness also in the present day science we have to study about space also and we have to include the study of relationship harmony and coexistence at the level of all these realities of existence as a whole so the human aspect has to be taken care of even the analysts today are saying that if the science is mostly focused on physical facilities then the society is not going to get a good shape so the human aspect has to be taken care of if you see with this concern only the subjects of humanities by introducing technical courses isn't it so that people are exposed to the uh, thought pattern of a human being they are able to expose to some understanding of relationship of behavior so we, we have, have to include this also as a part of science and then only our science can be fulfilling to the society then only the science can further lead to a state where the society could be undivided the, there could be universal human order in the society so we need to work a lot in terms of science isn't it but that is possible only when we have the clarity about the right understanding we have the clarity about the human goal if there is no clarity of the human goal if you have no clarity about the human goal then of course our science is going to be misleading so with right understanding comes wisdom with wisdom comes science now in the current day science we have missed out on the part of right understanding and wisdom and we are just trying to deal with science of work and there also we do not have a proper vision and that's why people are wondering how many years this earth is going to survive if you look at the state of wars among nations if you look at the destruction of natural resources if you look at the way profit maximization has taken to the fore then uh, it is really being felt that the society cannot be sustainable going this way isn't it now we have some homework for you here as we have been taking homework in every lecture so we have seen that science can be expanded as science of behavior science of work and science of participation so in the present day science are we taking care of all three or only the science of work and what all aspects are included there in the science of work also are we able to take care of the preservation of nature are we able to take care of the justice while working together so only the science of work in only some limited aspects of it so this is something that you have to make out now in the science of participation what do you see as your role at different levels right from family order to the nation to the world family order so is your role only going to be limited to get a good job a handsome salary and if possible no work is that so or is it something going to be in terms of ensuring your participation in the universal human order so does the present day education system prepare you for these roles or not you have to evaluate this for yourself and note it down and if not then what change is required in the present education system so try to work it out there is something for you to explore something to investigate within and then you see that your whole imagination starts getting transformed when you start thinking in these terms so today we talked about the science of work and science of participation in larger order and we saw that there is so much of scope to work in terms of work and participation the present day science is not able to take care of the human aspect properly so we are not able to ensure justice in our relationship we are also not able to ensure mutual fulfillment with the rest of nature and that's how we have to take it very seriously and we have to evolve such plans programs implementation strategies uh, evaluation techniques so that we are able to develop the right kind of science to have mutually fulfilling relationship with the human being as well as the rest of nature so this is something that we discussed in the lecture today thank you